we start now describing the design of the flip-flops. Let's have a quick review of the latches. We mentioned that latches can be used as a storage elements, and the simplest latch is the S prime R prime latch, where if S prime is zero, the latch will be set to one, provided that I prime is one, of course. And even when S prime goes to one, the latch will keep the one, so it maintains the state. And then we went to the to providing an enable input to the latch so that when enable, uh, the enable input will make the latch either enabled or disabled as we explained earlier. And after that, we went from the SR latch to design the D latch or data latch, which we also called a transparent latch. And simply, when the latch is enabled, the data will be passed to the output. So if D is one, output is one, if D is zero, output of zero. Now we can safely move to the flip-flops. The state of a flip-flop is switched by a change in the control input, which means changing the enable that we have just mentioned or the clock as an example. And the momentary change is called a trigger. So the trigger, it causes the latch to go for change from one state to the other. And the transition, in the enable causes the triggering of the flip-flop. The problem with the latch, as we explained earlier, is that it responds to a change in the level of the clock pulse. Uh, the clock pulse, as we know, goes through two transitions, from zero to one, or from one to zero. Now, the solution to this problem is to change the operation of the flip-flop to trigger only during a transition of the clock pulse. And of course, we have two transitions of the clock pulse. The positive transition when the clock pulse goes from zero to one, and the negative transition when the clock pulse goes from one to zero. Let us look at the clock pulse. If the latch responds to the level of the clock pulse, it will respond all through this period. However, if the latch responds to the edge of the clock pulse, it will respond only through during this period, which is very short time, if it is positive edge triggered, or during this period when it is negative edge triggered. Let us see how do we design the flip-flop by using the D latch that we studied earlier. There are basically two types of edge triggered D flip-flops. The first one is called master slave D flip-flop, or we call it sometimes negative edge triggered flip-flop. It operates as follows. We have the flip-flop consists of two latches. One is called the master and the other is called the slave. These names will be clear very soon. Now let us assume that D is zero and the clock is zero. So what happens? This is not enabled and this is enabled. Therefore, the master will not accept the data. When will the master accept the data? When the clock goes to one. So when the clock is one, the master is enabled, and this data will be transferred to Y. So Y will be zero here. However, when Y is zero, the input of the slave is zero, but the enable of the slave will not be zero, will not be one, it is zero now because this inverter have changed the clock and therefore this zero will not be transferred to the output. The output will stay as it was before. When will the output be transferred? Only when the clock goes from one to zero. So this will become one and enable will become one and this input will be passed to the output. So to summarize what we have done, the master latch is affected by the input when the clock pulse goes from zero to one. And then the slave latch will be affected by its input only when the clock goes from one to zero. So if we look at the two latches together, we find that the input D is transferred to the Q 
So this D is transferred to the view at the negative edge of the clock pulse, as we have just seen. Therefore, this latch is called master slave because the slave is not affected by the input D. The slave is affected only by the master. So the master drives the slave as it wants. This flip-flop is called master slave flip-flop or D negative edge trigger, which is very important for us. Let's look at the other type of lift. Call it positive edge trigger. And from the name, we would expect that the data D will be will appear at the output when the clock goes from 0 to 1. Let us examine the operation of this flip-flop. First, assume the clock is 0. And when this is 0, this is 0, and this is 0, S will be 1, and R will be 1. And if S is 1, this will be 1. And if R is 1, this will be 1. And now, if D is equal to 0, so let us make D 0 now, and the clock goes from 0 to 1, so this is 1, and this is 1, and this is 1 here. And when D is 0, we find this is 1 here. So this is 1, and this is 1, and this is 1. What we see is that R will change from 1 to 0. R changes to 0. When R changes to 0, this will be 1 here. And this will be 1, and therefore this will be 0. Hence, to summarize what we have done, if the clock is 0, S will be 1 and R will be 1. If D goes to 0, then when the clock goes from 0 to 1, R will change and the flip-flop will be reset. Hence, to conclude, Q will, be, will get the value of 0 only at the positive edge of the clock. Now, if there is a change in D, while the clock is equal to 1, R will remain 0. So let us see. Suppose we make D1. This one here, of course, before that, when R becomes 0, this will become 0, and this will stay 1, irrespective of the value of D. Therefore, when the clock is 1, the flip-flop will not be responsive to any further changes in the input. So that is really a quick description of the positive edge trigger D type flip-flop, where we took the case of D equal to zero. Let's look at the other situation where D, so let's look again afresh, assume a clock is equal to zero, so this is zero, and when this is zero, and this is zero, S will be one, and R will be one, and this will be 1, and this will be 1 here. So, what happens if we make D equal to 1? So this is 1, and this will be 0, and this will be 0 here, and this will also be 0 here. And now, let us change the clock from 0 to 1. So the clock becomes here 1, and this will be 1 here, and this will be 1 here, and of course, this is 0, 1 from before, so this will be 1 here, and this will be 1 here, and set will be 0. When set becomes 0, this will be 1 here, and this will be 1, and this will be 0, and therefore, we conclude that when the clock went from 0 to 1, the input D has been transferred to Q and the flip-flop has been set. That's what we have seen. Now, if there is a change in D, while clock is equal to one, let us see what will happen. Let us change D here. So D, if it becomes zero, if it becomes zero, this will become one. And this is zero here. And this will become one here. And one, one, zero, this will stay one here. 
and s will remain zero. So if data changes, s will remain at zero. And hence we can say that the flip-flop is unresponsive to further changes in the input. So to summarize the D type positive edge trigger flip-flops, whether D is zero or one, when the clock is zero, nothing will happen at the output. And when the clock goes from zero to one, when the clock becomes one after it was zero, whatever is at the input of the flip-flop will go to the output of the flip-flop. So that's why we call it positive edge trigger flip-flop. So the input is transferred to the output at the positive edge of the clock. One final observation, which one do you think is easier? The master-slave flip-flop or the positive edge trigger flip-flop? Let us look at both. The master-slave includes two different latches and each one has four NAND gates. So we have a total of eight NAND gates and an inverter as we have seen before. However, the positive edge trigger has only six NAND gates. Therefore, this is actually simpler than the master slave, although the explanation or understanding its operation is a little bit more difficult. Now, we will move further to see how do we make the different characteristic equations of the flip.